Check this stuff out folks. Some new tools sent in from Evolution Power Tools. This is some of their new cordless tools. Main one, their new 36 volt 10 inch cordless miter saw. And they've also sent in their 18 volt cordless vacuum, wet and dry. And their universal miter saw stand. Now I'm not reviewing as many tools these days, so why take on Evolution? Simple. I already use Evolution Power Tools. This is the little abused workhorse I always use. Look at the state of this thing. An old green Evolution Fury. I know from experience these here are little workhorses. So I was more than happy to take this on, do a little review and test out video. This particular one is just a little workhorse that just will not die. This is still working and I still use it. Couldn't tell you how old it is, probably about 9 or 10 years old now. It was retired for a long time. Until I got the bigger 10 inch one. Now this one was burnt out. That done some amount of cutting. And I don't mean light cutting. I mean benches. 3 inch thick treated timber. And the only time I'd ever cut that timber is when it was wet. This thing done some amount of cutting and took some amount of abuse. Needs a new armature. Was going to order one, but whenever that broke down, I started using that again. And this has been running since, so I haven't really got round to ordering the armature for it. And that's the other thing about Evolution Tools. You can buy all the spare parts for them. So if they break down, you can fix them up, and then you can buy everything in these. Armature, field, housing, bearings, the whole lot. They are a fully repairable and professional brand. So. Let's get the old stuff out of the way and look at the new stuff. Four amp hour battery. A nice single charger. Standard filter on top, gauze as well. Flexi hose, decent clamps on it as well, some attachments, little brush, nice little unit, simple and effective, nice little body on it as well, same sort of shape and setup as a standard vacuum, Very nice and simple inside as well, you're just going to have a switch battery connector straight onto a DC motor. Nice, simple and reliable. Let your air out if you want to blow. Nice one. So that's the back. Now for the main event. This is what we all want to see. Nice universal evolution blade. That in itself is very expensive. Brilliant blades. Rails. Kerf board. This is a zero clearance kerf board. So the first cut you actually cut through. So you have a nice fine gap on it. You don't have a big hole. The clamps. Dust bag. Batteries. Here is 
the five amp hour batteries. Have you noticed anything about them? Do they look familiar? Bauer, screw fix brand. Instead of Evolution taking out their own brand of battery, they've actually teamed up with screw fix and went with a reliable battery that people already have and like using. These here Urbauer ones are quite good. And it's nice to see Evolution teamed up with them. Exact same batteries and they're interchangeable on both tools. So if you already have Urbauer tools, you can use the batteries with your Evolution saws. Of course, decent warranty is important as well. Two year warranty with the batteries. Not many brands do that. Normally it's only a one year warranty with batteries. Evolution's giving you a two year warranty. So that feature in itself is another big selling point. Interchangeable batteries is a big thing. All the bigger brands are starting to do it now as well. They don't want just one battery platform. Nobody really just wants one battery. You want to be able to change them into different tools. Evolution is listening to the crowd and doing that. Manuals in, build instructions. The other wee bits and pieces. Your handle, your dust port. She also comes with double charger as well because she's a twin battery tool you want the double charger for speed of charging now very easy to put these things together basically come in two sections you've got your motor and gearbox section frame itself which is a nice strong aluminium frame in this as well and more clamps and that's a lot so what have we got an aluminium deck main thing good aluminium back fence as well Linear roller bearings on the top like a standard miter saw. Decent size and a decent width. They're a nice features of she comes standard with a normal curve board, but if you wanted to, you can put on a zero clearance curve board as well. Pop this out and just stick that one on so you can do finer cuts then. Linear roller bearings and she's a double bevel. She's a compound miter saw, she shoots bevels on both sides, but you definitely need adjustable fences. Slide them back and forth. And as well, for the mitre guide, the actual locks for your different angles, your 90s and 45s. She's built more like the Dewalt and the new Makita's with an actual plit here. So this is what locks in your angles. But unlike the Makita one, this here, there's a steel plit instead of aluminium. So these here with notches, what she's going into, won't wear out over time. Plus, if you give it a bang and you mess up your angles, she's not cutting straight anymore. All you have to do is slacken off those four bolts and you can actually adjust the whole saw. Once you get her square, tighten these down. Very good setup, very easy to adjust. Actually putting this whole thing together could not be easier. Rails go on, tighten them up, then your motor section just goes straight onto the rails. And to actually lock this head into place so it doesn't pull off the railings again, there's two little holes here with a little green pin on it. You should prise up the pin. Until it pops out. Simple. 
Now she's not going anywhere. Now that also means if you ever have to do work on this, even if you just want to transport it, you can also push them weed pans on, pull the whole motor head off the rails again. No tools required. You pull the rail off, pull the head off, and free up your base. Very handy setup. Last thing then, is the all important blade. Now these evolution blades, like I say, very good. So this saw is actually a multi-material saw. So this will actually cut steel as well, if you wanted. So you cut timber, nail impregnated timber, and steel. Now the steel, I know myself, it will actually do. But you need the clamps, that's what these mainly come for. Your normal clamp that you lay like a timber saw, nobody ever uses. This is mainly for steel if you're cutting metal on it. Same as this. If you're using a cutoff saw, they come with clamps as well. The metal has to be actually held down and clamped onto the frame. If it moves at all, even with a proper dedicated tungsten top cutoff saw, it'll destroy the blade. Same as this. If you try to cut steel with this here and it's just free floating, like we're using timber, you're going to destroy the teeth. I know myself, I've done it in a hurry. If you use the clamps, she so cut steel all day and then go straight back to cutting timber. Amazing piece of kit these here blades. They're worth their weight in gold, but they're not cheap to buy. It's amazing these saws actually come with these here given the price to buy individually. Wrap that on. Your final thing, your knob for actually tightening up the base to lock your angles. dust port. Let us see what she sounds like. Nice one. I am not fitting the clamps because I'm mainly going to use this for timber. So let's get the miter saw stand out and get this thing set up properly. And while we're building the stand, we'll charge up the batteries. Thank you, Jacob. Probably a bit more to build than this one. Decent rubber wheels anyway, not just hard plastic. Mm. Luckily, the main bulk of it is already built. That already comes as one unit. Now, looks like a lot to this. There's actually not very much. A few pieces just needs to be bolted together, and that's about it. This here is just the handle for transporting. And it's just two button head bolts for that. And these are just little axles for holding the wheels on.
knees just hold on the wheels there. Two big washers, two lock nuts. Let's get it up. Also, these legs can adjust the height. I'm just going to put them to the first setting for now. Oh, these brackets for the rails. She's fishing towards you, and the handle goes underneath. Another knob goes on there. And the actual arm drops on. Nice quick release brackets then for attaching your miter saw. Extra brackets, what are they for? These are actually to allow you to fit any brand of miter saw to these here stands. So, if the miter saw doesn't fit these clamps, you can bolt on these extensions to fit any brand of miter saw. Very good idea. So anybody that has a miter saw and they don't want to go spend a few hundred euro on a stand, check out the Evolution one. These will fit any saw. And this thing comes with a big load of nuts, bolts and washers. A bit intimidating, wonder where the hell all these go. This is all just for different saws. Short, long and medium. For the evolution, you just need the medium one. Now, it's a real shame to be sent this thing and just do a wee test video on it. I'd rather actually give this a bit of proper work. So let's just do that. Let's use this here to build something proper. Let's build another one of these. A three inch thick treated timber garden bench. I need another one of these for this picnic set anyway. Big table, big bench. Need a second one. So let's put this yoke to a bit of use and build another one of these. Now, these aren't exactly easy to make. They are seriously thick and seriously heavy. They're made by 4x3 treated timber and 6x3 treated timber. The back leg and arms and the actual middle are all 6 inch. The rest is then all 4x3 treated timber. It's meant for the seat. It's door frame timber. That'll be a good test for this yuck. Because as anybody knows, treated timber is never dry. It's always wringing wet. And wet timber and a miter saw is always hard to cut. So let's try it out in this. First off, 6x3s, 16 foots and 18 foots. Technically, you'll need two of these, so we'll go for one of the 18s. Plus, they look a tighter drain. Yep, take this. Better if I had a van for this. For the seat, need about a door frame. Go for something nice and straight, at least straight enough, with a good tight grain, and as little knots as possible. So that looks good. And then a four and a half also. Oh, that's a nice one there. Nice dense grain and nice and heavy. We'll go with that. It's a good job she's a Toyota. Lastly, taking screws for the seat, 75 mils and 6 by 150s for the frame of it. So that costs about 40 or 50 quid. Tumber, 
cost another hundred quid for them five boards. Not cheap. I'll give it something a wee bit harder. Another question is, what you like for square? Not bad. Forgot to check that out of the box. Perfectly square out of the box. Yes, it's a bit more. Six by three. Straight like butter. Look at that. No bother at all to it. Doesn't struggle on the slightest. I mean, 
just look at that no bother at all to it That's all the material cut. Two arms, two back legs, two front legs, the seat, supports for the back, the top of the back, two rails for the front and back, and the four rails for either side, and a few extra pieces in for the middle and for the bottom rail. It has to be cut to measure.
You can. Big lift, big lift. Good man. Thank you. Perfect. Then. So how is she running so far? I've cut all the other pieces, all these side bits. I've cut all these here, chamfers, and all the backs. Cut all these here to size as well. Done a fair bit more cutting. Especially all these backs. That's 18 long cuts and 9 straight cuts. What have we got? 3 bar and 3 bar. I'm going to use up one bar of power. Cutting all that lot. That's pretty good going. So it's not too sore in the batteries this thing. Even when you're doing some sore cutting. This stuff ain't easy to cut. That's three inch treated timber. And it's not dry. It's still damp. That's pretty good going.
Not yet. Okay, go now. Shut it down. Good night. That's her one finished summer seat. Well, finished for now, you know. All we need to do now is cut all the plugs, give it a last wee sand to smooth off the ends, and give it a coat of paint, and that'll do her. But that'll do for another day, as long as the actual door frame seat is painted, it'll be alright outside because the rest of the timber is all treated. But that's her one heavy duty bench. Now, this isn't an easy thing to be making, and it is quite sore in saws. Cutting through three inch thick treated timber, it's always damp, always gives bother, so it needs to have a decent saw to be able to do it. So, as for the review, what's all this stuff like? Start off with the vacuum, cordless vac, to be honest, it doesn't really matter which brand you buy, cheap or expensive, on a cordless hoover like this here, there's not much to them. It's a DC motor with an impeller fan, hooked up to the battery with a switch. The only other things you're going to get in them is different levels of filtration for keeping out different amounts of dust. Basically, different filters and maybe a bit of foam on the top of it. That's about the height of it. After that, you'll have auto start then, which has a wee circuit board for hooking up to your saw or device you're actually using to start the hoover on its own. This doesn't have that, it's just a plain hoover. So this thing, for the price, 
It's actually just a really good cordless vac. Can't really go wrong with it, to be honest. So, yeah, good wee unit. Actual stand. The Evolution miter saw stand. The only thing I could find or fault on it was the rails. Good long extension on them. They can definitely take a good long length of timber. But, but I did just find this arm would drop down on its own, even when it was tightened up. But, in fairness, I was trying to hold up an 18 foot length of 6x3 treated timber, which was pushing it just a little bit too much. So yeah, the stand itself definitely does the job. I've always thought these were very good for the money. Now, as for the main thing, the saw. It's actually a very nice miter saw, to be honest. Functions perfectly as a cordless saw. Don't think they'll ever take the place of a corded saw, mind you. Cord is always going to last a little bit longer. But if you need portability and you want a cordless saw, absolutely nothing wrong with this unit. Decent sized motor, twin battery systems, far better. I find instead of going for a one big battery system. It's a 10 inch blade instead of a 12, which is far better. Because for a cordless saw, when you go to 12, it puts a lot more strain on the motor. 10 inch is better for amount of cutting you can do plus longevity of the actual saw frame of it nice aluminium frame nicely built even the side rails are very similar to the dewalt ones good back fronts plenty of adjustments on it easy setup for actual your bevel cuts and your miter quick release as well for freeing up your miter so it's not going into the different positions auto click nice we feature that for actually mounting it on and off the miter saw stand as well really nice system unhook the handles put down your arm you can grab the front handle and the back handle and lift it forward thing just pops straight off I have seen a few comments on this here saw or any evolution miter saws for that matter people saying they're not as accurate and don't give a clean cut well I can tell you especially for a cordless saw but corded ones as well they all have soft start and if you want a clean cut, you have to make sure this is at full speed before you start cutting. If you start cutting before your blade's at full speed, you're going to get tear out. You need to have the blade run at full speed after the soft start before you'll get a good clean cut. As well, you need to remember that these saws and blade are a multi-material saw. So they'll actually cut steel as well as timber or timber with metal nails on it or bad timber or something very good for a lot of different types of job but not perfect for one dedicated job if you want a really good finish on your timber get a really smooth accurate cut change your blade evolution actually do dedicated timber blades or you can use any brand you can go for an expensive Freud blade or something if you want just make sure for the cordless saw you're getting the thin kerf blade two mull blade so it's not actually taking that much power to run the thing. Don't put on a big, thick, heavy blade for a cordless saw. So yeah, after testing out this cordless one and having two corded ones myself, I can say I've always found them very, very accurate. And the blades, I know I mightn't spend a whole lot of money on blades, but I always find the actual multi-material blade very, very good. I mean, honestly, for the saw, two 5 amp batteries and a ton charger. For six fifty, any other brand is going to be costing you twice as much for that setup. So yeah, definitely a good setup. And Evolution, as you've seen from other videos, Evolution miter saws, magnetic drills, cutoff saws—they're just workhorses. They last for years. Mightn't be the most accurate thing in the world, but they do the work and they do it well. And if they do ever fail and need to be fixed up. All the parts are available, so if you bust a guard, break a kerf board, you can definitely just go out, get a new part, stick it on, and keep on running. So yeah, definitely recommend the Evolution miter saw if you're needing a cordless saw 